to a very special welcome to a very special episode of the Clinical Problem Solver Sunday edition. Uh, today we have a very special episode catered specifically to our IMG um, colleagues that are starting their internship here in the United States. So uh, with CPS, we've been we've had a very special experience over this past year doing some episodes that specifically cater to international international uh, medical graduates. Uh, many of us, many of us see the struggles that international medical graduates face early on in their training, and we thought that having a session like this, just rapidly put together, would help alleviate some of those stresses that you are starting out with, and uh, it might be very valuable to our viewers. Uh, it's always a great privilege to see all of you flourish and blossom when starting out in your internship across the U.S. And uh, to help with today's episode, we have a couple of special guests. I'm going to ask Dr. Williams, first of all, to unmute his mic and uh, introduce himself. Hi, folks. Thank you, Ravi. Yeah, I'm uh, Richard Williams. I am a semi-retired former program director <clears throat> at a community hospital internal medicine program in Baltimore, Maryland, which isn't too far outside of Washington, D.C., and in that community hospital, we had about 40 to 45 residents, and I was their program director for 45 years. I continue to teach students and residents in semi-retirement. I was also a gastroenterologist in uh, practice. I would say that the majority of international medical grads coming to the United States join a community hospital program as opposed to a university hospital program. Community hospital programs have a university affiliation, but they are community hospitals and not universities. In our program, Typically, over the three years, PGY 1, 2, and 3, we would have graduates from five continents. It was so exciting. North America, South America, Europe, Asia, Africa. We could never get anybody from Australia. And as far as I know, there is no possibility for Antarctica. But it was so exciting to have people from five continents. We, we supported one another. We learned from one another, not only medicine, but cultures. Uh, it was just amazing and so enriching for me personally. I've been uh, retired as a program director going on five years. But I look forward to sharing anything I can with you that might be helpful. And I particularly welcome your questions. Thank you, Dr. Williams. I just want to add, Dr. Williams was the epitome of a program director. He would invite everybody to his house. He would invite people out to dinners. He would have bowling sessions, uh, roller skating. Uh, what did we do? So many different, we went to uh, baseball games and, and all sorts of fun. So. Dr. Williams was a fabulous and fantastic program director. I was lucky to, to train under him, and he's won numerous awards in, in teaching as well. Next, we have Maria from uh, MHIM here in Baltimore. I'm going to ask her to unmute the mic and also introduce herself. Hi, everyone. Um, well, I'm Maria. Um, just finishing intern year at Medster Health Baltimore program, which is a community program. Um, that we go to several hospitals in the Baltimore area. I'm originally from San Jose, Costa Rica, very, very small country in Central America. And it's been a wonderful, wonderful experience this first year as an intern. Um, scary at the beginning, but really rewarding to learn a lot and meet wonderful people. Thank you very much, Maria, uh, and thanks for coming on today to, to share your story. And next up, we have Kanu Bansal, who's uh, currently a PGY2 at uh, SVIM in Worcester. I'm going to ask him to mute his mic and also introduce himself. 
Hello, everyone. Um, first of all, thank you so much, Dr. Singh, Maria, and all the CP solvers for inviting me. Um, I'm Karu. I'm, I'm also just finishing up my PGY1 right now. Um, excited to become a PGY2. And I'm very excited to answer any questions and share my experience on uh, being an IMG and how to get through the intern year. Thanks, Karu. I really appreciate you joining today. And then next up, we have Franco who is also going to contribute and uh, give his perspective from a new PGY-1 uh, entering into a program. So, Franco, could you also unmute your mic and, and uh, introduce yourself? Hi, everybody. I'm Franco. I am originally from Peru, and I just survived my first week as an intern here at Baltimore Sinai. And I'm here to share some talks about my first week. I'm also really interested to hear everything about Canu, Maria, and Dr. Richard to, to know a little more about how I can affront my whole inter year. Awesome. Also, thanks, Franco, for getting up this morning and uh, coming on this morning and uh, share your thoughts and your perspectives in, in starting PGY1. So the way we'll run it, if you have any questions in the chat, please feel free to to add them. But uh, we'll start off with Frank. Uh, actually, we'll start off with Dr. Williams. Dr. Williams, anything, any message that you'd like to, to share with our uh, viewers here regarding starting PGY1, how to be, especially the what PGY1s um, face with, you know, a lot of anxiety being in a new country, in a new system, not knowing the U.S. system in, in EMR and also presenting patients and so on. So there's a lot that they have to get to grips with. Anything that you would care to, to share with us? Yeah, there's, there's so much. And of course, when you arrive in the U.S., you, you will have orientation with your program. And that's usually uh, pretty intensive. And I think Franco can share his orientation experience. And they'll talk about the electronic medical record, uh, which is a feature that all of you will encounter. And uh, some issues about how teams are structured and um, how to present patients and so forth. So there'll be an orientation period. And then when you start, you will have seniors and you will have academic hospitalists that will supervise your work. And, and you must reach out to them for feedback, for advice, especially early on, you are not on an island. You have a strong support system. Having said that, I would recommend to all of you a Google talk by Dr. Dweck, D-W-E-C-K, called The Growth Mindset. And the, the basic concept is that it's not something you master on day one. It's a journey of growth for the rest of your lives. So give yourself a break. You're going to grow into the role and then you're gonna grow into the second year and the third year. So uh, have, a, have the frame of mind of a growth mindset rather than a perfectionist from day one, putting all that expectation on yourself to be perfect from day one. Awesome. Uh, very, yeah, very, very important uh, statement that you made there that uh, it's a journey and it's, it's very difficult to cram everything into the first week, but take your time. And, you know, every program that uh, does face or, or does um, uh, train a lot of IMGs, they know the angst anxiety and stresses so they will help they have a system set up especially during that orientation so they will help so the process is in place next i'm going to ask maria um, maria if you could hop into a time machine and go back and uh, meet yourself although with these time travels you're not supposed to go back and meet yourself because it could uh, upset the fabric of time but what would you tell yourself when you were starting internship to help you cope with the rigors of internship I think I'll tell myself to relax. <laughs> I think I was very anxious at the beginning. Um, I'll say myself to relax, to trust the process. Um, I think that when I started, I really wanted to understand how every, everything worked right away. I wanted to understand the medical records. I wanted to present the patients the right way. I really, really wanted to do everything 
right from the start. And of course, it's not possible. <laughs> You're just starting to learn new things, a lot, a lot of new things. So oh, I think I'll tell myself, relax. This is a process. Trust the process. You'll eventually get there. But you cannot uh, do everything from the start. Um, ask questions. Ask as many questions as you can. Um, because it's about that, about learning, about lear learning from your co-interns, um, your seniors, and the attendings. You will also have um, interns that are actually US um, students. So they do know very well the electronic medical system and the way you're supposed to, to present. So ask them to, um, don't be shy. And you'll see that everybody, there's a very nice culture here that everybody supports each other. And we are a team and the, the plan is to, to help the patients. So they'll help you and the patients will benefit from, from all of this. Absolutely, some really powerful points there that we're all in this together. Uh, no one is alone. We all benefit and the, ultimately the, the patients benefit from this. So uh, absolutely beneficial. And uh, what I always remember is when you go into PGY2, you remember what people did for you. So you turn around and pay it forward so you help the new incoming interns as well. So uh, that's that's teamwork that uh, I'm always impressed by every year when we go through this. Next, I'll ask Kanu, uh, if you could then take this time machine and hop into it and go back in time, what would you tell yourself to help get through uh, PGY-1 again, if you had to? Um, I think, first of all, I was really very lucky during my first week that I had a resident who used to come one hour early and leave one hour late for me to help me uh, understand each and every component every day, um, help me bridge to that. I, I don't think I would definitely change that. He, he was someone uh, who I could rely upon during my initial days and uh, help me guide through this process. Probably the only thing I would change is to not stress uh, and um, take care of myself, take care of my sleep and health. Um, you know, I think those things are very important. And sometimes during the stress and the initial days, um, we forget those things. We are so anxious to take care of the patients that we sometimes forget to take care of our health um, and compromise on ourselves. Um, so I think that is something um, I learned from my initial days uh, on being an intern. Awesome. And uh, then I'll ask Franco, now who's starting out, uh, what have you learned? I know you had some nervousness coming into this, the new system, new country, new culture as well. Uh, how's your experience been so far? Well, I think that one of the most important things I figured it out early is that all your co-interns are facing the same as you. So talking to them, sharing experience, sharing your feelings is really valuable. You'll find that you are not alone in this. And with all the team of your co-interns and all their effort, you can kind of mix all the pieces together and get an idea of how to progress over the time. I think that's really, really, really nice. I already love my co-interns, how they are like supporting each other, how we talk about every other days. Then the orientation is really important. Uh, at the beginning, it seems like you are receiving a lot of information regarding the electronic medical health records, how to put orders, how to present. But it is good to know the whole panorama and then tackle one step at a time. So I have already have time in clinic, in my elective. So eventually you get there as they, I, I think I'm thinking that you, I will be eventually get there in the moment that I can easily present a patient, easily take all down all the electronic records, shortcuts and that sort of stuff. Um, for me, uh, I think that the, the environment, the learning environment and the supportive way of the seniors, the chiefs and all the faculty is really important because all that effort, all that support makes you understand that everyone has been through the process and everyone knows how is the process. 
So I cannot reflect what uh, Kanu and Maria say before that. Trust the process. I think I'm trusting the process and so far it's, it's getting good every day. I'd say that. And, and what Franco, Kanu and Maria have mentioned, this permeates through many different programs. So this is not really program specific. We, we all want you to succeed. We want you to do well in the program because ultimately you are the face of the program. You represent all of our programs collectively. So uh, all of these, um, the training tips and all of the experiences that they've mentioned, you will come across this in any training program that you end up matching in. Um, I'll pass the mic to Rafa if there's any questions in the chat that people may have. Yeah, uh, so Vikash asked, uh, he's starting, he shares that he's starting next week and he asked uh, for us to share some don'ts I guess some don'ts doing PGY one. We'll let anybody answer that. Could you repeat the question, Ravi, please? Oh, um, Rafa. If you could share some don'ts, things people shouldn't do during their internal oh. year. Huh. I can chip in. Uh, um, I was just trying to write a list. <laughs> so I think, first of all, uh, don't be shy away from asking for any help from anybody. Um, uh, you you never know um, who can help you in any way at any time of the night. Or, uh, you know, I, I have counted on so many people um, who have lended me support, um, even if I was facing a tough MICU night or if I'm having a tough admission at any time, I think. Having that support system where you can rely um, is so important. I, I don't think I can stress that enough. Um, then I would just say, uh, never lie and um, never shy away from doing any hard work. Um, otherwise it just comes back to bite you. Um, people do understand everything and it's okay to say no to certain things. Um, and they understand that never um, over promise and under deliver. Um, and then this is what I think, uh, um, as an IMG, it's sometimes difficult, um, is to, um, make a good rapport with the nurses and never argue with them, trying to understand where they're coming from, if they have any questions or concerns. Um, I learned this so much during my, uh, night float where I used to get a million pages and then I have to counsel them on s small, small things, um, and just be like, this is okay, but this is what I'm thinking right now. And if this is how you're concerned, we can approach it this way. Um, and then I think always advocating for your patient um, and never taking an extra, I always want taking an extra step for the patient to make sure it's safe and making sure they feel comfortable with their decision. Um, I felt those were some of the things that helped me a lot during my turn year. Thank you. Thank you. Some uh, great uh, words of wisdom there, um, especially that phrase, uh, never over promise and under deliver. Absolutely. Um, I have one question, like, did you ever feel you had to work harder as an IMG to prove yourself in, in your first year? Um, I think uh, it's, I've been lucky that my program is more IMG friendly. So we all understand each other and where we're all coming from, um, you know, from all different walks of life and um, different places, trying to understand cultures. Sometimes it's difficult um, when you try to compare yourself nationally and if you feel, are you good enough? And sometimes that imposter syndrome does kick in, but then, you know, you trust in your process, you trust in yourself. Um, um, I, um, you always think, will you reach that level or will you, um, you know, be that, um, be that good doctor that you always dreamt to be? But, um, you know, you trust the process. And looking back, um, I was talking to somebody a week ago, and then I realized how much growth we had in this past year. And you just don't realize it because you're making those baby steps every day. Um, but at the end of the day, the, uh, you know, um, you're going to do um, as well as you work hard. That's for sure. Excellent. And um, one of the questions I, I always get from people is communication now coming over as an IMG. 
we all have accents. I still have some of my accent from England. Uh, I'm going to ask Maria, like, uh, did you have to learn effective communication to be able to to talk with your patients and, and learn how to communicate with your patients as far as updating them and so on to gain their trust? Were there any hurdles that you had to overcome? I think that, yes, at the beginning, um, well, of course, I have my Latin accent. I don't think that it was the accent the problem. I think that more the way we can we communicate here with the patient, I think it's a little bit different from back home. Um, and it's actually something that I really like here. Um, the United States um, sharing decisions is something very, very important with your patients. Um, so trying to go over the plan and getting their input, getting their, um, what they think about it is something very important. It's something that I have to, had to learn in clinic that it's not just what the doctor thinks, it's what the patient also wants. And then we get, go, we have an agreement and then we, we do that. It's a lot about sharing decisions and even in inpatient medicines, um, we need consent for everything. <laughs> um, so, so that's also something, something very important to be updating your patient frequently, um, telling him the lab results, um, this is what's happening, this is what we want to do. Um, so communication is very, very important. And I don't think it was like the accent, but that, that other part about have an effective communication, not only with your team, but also with your patients. Yeah, Maria, your English is, is great. So um, I'm glad to hear that. And um, uh, I think uh, you're absolutely right, effective communication. And, you know, nothing goes more or, or, or helps you in, in this process. We may all look different and, and so on. But, you know, if you show that you care, and like you said, going back, updating, and those patients will see rather than the individual that they're, they're uh, receiving great care and concern from the intern. And that will go a long way in, in winning over patients. I'm going to turn to Dr. Williams. Um, we've had um, a couple of questions to, to our um, guests here, but anything you would like to add in this communication or uh, learn, how about uh, introduction to American culture or getting to grips with the system for a lot of our IMG members? Yeah, and, and I'd be very curious what some of our other participants have experienced as far as a culturalization. Um, I, I think you get out there where you make friends. You may have some family or friends in the area, but if not, you have uh, built-in friends with your fellow interns. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you socialize and you get out and you do things. We have working hour limitations, uh, which I think are, are pretty well designed. So you do have time off and time to accomplish things. There are a lot of practical things early on, like uh, a driver's license and uh, so forth. Uh, but use your time to get out and explore uh, and build your friendships. This is the way to uh, embrace the, uh, the new culture. Oh, thanks for uh, at least highlighting that. I forgot about that. So there's even outside of internship and performance and taking care of patients, there's these other stressors that your colleagues, your U.S. colleagues may not have uh, getting. Some will have visa issues or changing a visa, uh, second uh, transportation. So thanks. Th thankfully, we have Uber. <laughs> I know a lot of interns are using Uber till they can buy a car or even get their license, get their social security. Uh, that's a lot of work. I always feel terrible, but we, your program should give you enough time. Like Dr. Williams mentioned that there should be time to then get out and be able to get these because these off government offices close very early. Uh, so I'm going to turn to Kanu, Franco, Maria. Um, what, what were your tactics in trying to get all of this other work done, other stresses that you had uh, during your intern year? So I was fortunate to be here um, a little bit early than the program started. 
So that gave me like time to start doing all those necessary things, the visa, the social security, and then trying to, to look for, hopefully for a car. Um, but at the beginning I did rely on public transportation, <laughs> uh, which was, wasn't was that recommended here in Baltimore, but uh, the bus was great for me <laughs> at the beginning um, and also lived in Uber, of course. Um, and also also your your co-enters and residents reach out to them. Um, at the beginning, um, they would also give me rides. And then once I was able to get a car, I still ride people that still don't have a car. So, so reach out to your co-interns and your residents. We all have like different situations and we all help each other. Absolutely, absolutely. Reach out to your colleagues. I remember when uh, Dr. Williams, when I was an intern, uh, one of my colleagues, uh, Tumala, right? Who remember Mohan Tumala? So he shared a ride with me to the clinic and my air conditioning had broke down. And this was in the middle of July, 90 degree heat. And he's like, wow, your car is so hot. <laughs> and he never took a ride with me again. So eventually I got that got that fixed. But definitely um, um, uh, share with your colleagues. And I remember Franco was going to get uh, some of this work done and they'd go in groups. So less of a stress, everybody together, um, you know, share the load. Uh, Kanu, any, any input on this? I think it's very important. Um, I was very lucky that, uh, you know, our program made a list for us, all like all the documents and what all we need to get. And um, in our batch, we had to do it when, you know, the Delta wave and the COVID pandemic was still at the peak. Uh, you have to arrive early because then you get quarantined for a week. So um, that's another thing. I think it also kind of depends on the visa. Um, so I think if you're on J1 visa, you can arrive in the country within 30 days of your starting date versus H1B where you can, I think you only have seven to 10 days. So that's kind of also uh, plays a factor. Uh, but I think the um, program leadership understands that. So I think if you reach out to them that if you need to take an extra off day or if you can take an off early, uh, reach out to your team members that if you can take an off just so you can attend an appointment. I think that's really important because, as you said, these offices obviously close during the working hours when you are working as well. Um, so I think those things, um, having a list of what all you need and what all documents uh, so that when the time comes, you quickly arrange all the appointments and stuff like that. Um, I think that was really important. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm a great that that's a great thought having that list from the program to, to help guide you because a lot of this is foreign. Look, people come and like, I don't know what a social security number is. And that's pretty much central to everything uh, in, in your life here in the US. Franco, any additional thoughts? Well, I am halfway through all the things I must have here. So for me, the recommendation would be as the seniors, because all of them can have already gone through the process. They might know sh any shortcuts about all everything you need to, to tackle down, what documents to bring, uh, plan ahead of time. If you can arrive early, arrive early, even to uh, get the phone number really, really soon because everyone is going to ask for your US phone number and that's the way you get appointments. That's the way that they can communicate with you. I think what, that is one of the first things you need to do. Um, and try to understand how banking works here. For many countries, there are there are no difference between savings and checkings accounts. So try to read ahead of time about that. Um, communicate with your program about your payroll, about how they want to how do you how do they want all the things done for your bank to get your checks on time. Uh, get the wait for the 10 days that the uh, ECFMNG tells you before asking to your social security number. Um, what else? Um, for the car, um, actually plan ahead of that of time to that. Research all the opportunities you have because the prices are kind of crazy right now. So that's another important thing. And of course, Pair up with your co-interns so you can share your rights, not only to the hospital, but also to the administrative office so you can get all the work done. 
Some awesome, great, great. Uh, thanks for that input. Uh, we have a question in the chat. I was going to transition to this topic um, about the. I'm going to ask Dr. Williams uh, to be an effective intern in the first few weeks and and learn the ropes. Uh, that way, you become efficient. First thing is like studying is very difficult. You you you're tired. You get home late, call, admitting, but still have to learn somehow. So. What would you say tactics to learn? Then I'll share that. I'll, I'll ask that with Maria. And um, Franco hasn't gone through this yet, but uh, Kanu as well. And also uh, Vikash asked, when should we be going to the floors? Like, should we be going early that way to maximize uh, pre-rounding time? And then uh, last to leave. I wouldn't really say nowadays. I kind of, I will kind of ask, ask that and answer that as well. We have... Um, uh, time limitations or, or duty hours, so we definitely don't want you to, to to leave late. But getting here early definitely does help. But I'll ask Dr. Williams to chime in on that. Dr. Williams, you're muted. You know, this iPhone just auto-muted me. Do you guys have this problem too? The technology is taking over, uh, but that's just another uh, discussion. Um, but I love my iPhone, don't get me wrong. So learning, well, there's a lot going on uh, that's already been talked about, especially you know your first days, weeks, uh, there's just so much to acclimate to. And uh, don't put too much pressure on yourself somebody's doing it well, you can emulate them, you reach out to folks, get their advice, uh, and ease on in. You probably have developed your own style of learning. Uh, there's this amazing, and I get no kickbacks, there's this amazing entity called UpToDate. I love UpToDate. I used to have to carry a 20-pound tone uh, for uh, internal medicine and go find it in the locker. So now the answer is instantly at my fingertips. I personally like to take notes. I, I, you guys may be able to put something on your phone under notes. I still can't figure out that thumb thing. You know, look at my age, okay? But I love to take handwritten notes. Uh, and you'll find as you build, there's a term we use in clinical reasoning called illness scripts. You'll build your illness script for TTP, for uh, uh, HLH and so forth. And then as you build it, you'll just wanna add a few little things and you'll still be going back to update, to, up to date to augment your learning. So it's kind of like in little bits and pieces based on patient stories I've heard about or patients I've dealt with, that day, I try to build on a daily basis that way. And then you can consolidate your learning with, uh, with a product like MixApp. Some of you may be aware of medical knowledge self-assessment program. Again, I'm getting no kickbacks on any of this. I'm just sharing with you what I use even at my age to continue learning uh, on a, a daily basis and then on a, a consolidated basis. Yeah, absolutely agree. Uh, I remember Dr. Williams coming back from ACP would do all the half the mix up questions on the plane flight back. But uh, it, it's just so interesting, Dr. Williams being gastroenterologist would uh, like learn EKGs and write notes. Uh, I would see you were jotting down notes to fill in any gaps in knowledge. And uh, that's just very motivating. But yeah, Kanu mentions uh, you use whatever your program provides. So I think pretty much the standard is across the U.S. because at the end of the day, you have to have these in training exams every year to help guide you to prepare for the board exam. So a lot of programs do provide MixApp. I remember my program provided uh, MixApp. And along with MixApp, there are some other valuable additions like Board Basics is a first aid for the board exam. A lot of you may have already gone that and then there's flashcards and virtual DX. And again, I, we don't get any kickback, but it's a, it's a great product to 
start off with. And uh, by using that, I, I've been able to pass the board exam. And it also is very good in just helping for a quick run through uh, on a daily basis to brush up your knowledge. And then up to date is available in a lot of these institutions uh, to look up uh, if, if you have any questions. So, but I'll, I'll, also, I'll also ask Maria if there's anything that you used last year that really helped you in improving your knowledge and also comment on this coming in early, leaving late. Uh, what What is your thoughts on this? So on things improving my knowledge up to date for sure. Um, I'm very thankful that our electronic and medical records has like the up to date tab on the upper part. So every time like I was like with a typical patient or a, or a, any disease basically that you're not very sure about the management or a differential diagnosis or what things to order, I'll just click the tab, go and up to date the disease that I was thinking the patient might have and skimming is skimming it really fast, just like to look at the charts. Um, and then like you learn very, you learn, it's like a great way to learn while you're also taking care of your patient. Um, because unfortunately in your intern year, you don't have like much time to study outside of work. Um, you'll, it's tiring, it's great, but it's tiring. So you get home, you wanna, if you wanna sleep and there's like not much, time left for you to study so if you can use that time where you while you're in the hospital taking care of patients like to look look up things in up to date um that way i think it's it's a great way to take care of patients and and go through a thorough plan but at the same time that process helps you learn more about the disease that you're dealing with and regarding getting early um, yep, I definitely will recommend getting early, especially at the beginning, um, to go over the patient's chart, um, go over their vitals. If their if their labs are back, go over the labs, and then go to see all the patients. Always try to see all of your patients, and if you get early, you'll be able to talk to them more and do a more thorough exam. Um, if you get later, you'll be rushing, and at the most importantly, at the beginning when you're just starting to learn how everything works. Um, I think that getting early, it's very important to be, so that you're like in peace with yourself when the time of rounds arrive. Sometimes you'll still be like very anxious because you're not sure um, if you evaluated what you needed to when you, were, when you were with the patients. But if you get early, you'll have like more time to go over all their labs and also be able to chat a little bit more with your patients. So I will definitely recommend that. Yeah, ab absolutely. Uh, some some great thoughts there. And um, as far as uh, what you mentioned earlier, I want to go back. You mentioned a very powerful word, sleep. Sleep is very important. You need to have wellness. And sometimes we, coming from, uh, you know, giving up hours to, to, to study for step one, step two, and so on, just thinking, step one, step two material, um, I think it's more effective, I found, in, in getting sleep so that whatever knowledge you've accumulated du during the whole day, it, you allow it to then enter the deeper parts of your mind and get processed because sleep is where you process all the newly acquired tasks and, and learning points as well. So very important to, to get some sleep because next day you could also be fatigued, irritable, not functioning optimally and before you know it you'll you'll start having a multitude of uh health issues as well so really do take care of yourself as well uh kanu you would you like to chime in on that as well yeah i think i uh, i used to compromise on my sleep in first couple of blocks uh not give myself enough time to sleep um which i think was the first thing that i said i still kind of regret sometimes um the other thing is, um, as you said, uh, come early, um, but obviously that's on your personal merit. Um, it's not something that you have to inform the program that you're coming early uh, because then you don't want to violate your 80 hours, but for your benefit and just that you want to benefit the patient care, uh, you should just make yourself clear is that the reason you're coming early. Um, the other reason I used to come is because that 30 minutes of an hour, whatever you're using, you don't get any pages. So you can be as efficient and write your prelim notes, do a quick patient um, chart search and stuff like that. So 
when I used to get signed out or get any new admissions from night, then I can only focus on those people because I can triage them very early during the day. Um, again, because you have morning reports and, um, you know, grand zones and stuff. So you have to manage your day accordingly. And especially in those days, sometimes you have to come early. Or if you are half team, um, for example, one resident is off on a day, uh, then again, you have to, like, I used to just come early just to make sure that I don't get delayed during the rounds. Um, what I used to do sometimes in the initial parts uh, when I was still trying to become efficient is um, I used to go late, uh, but my uh, reason of going late was I was preparing myself for the next day. So if I had any like pending discharges to do that I'm expecting from tomorrow, or if I'm expecting these things or something like that to manage, first of all, with the case managers or something else, then I used to stay a little bit late just to make sure I don't have that headache in the morning to do that stuff very early. Definitely uh, great thoughts there, especially the organization you meant or you um, mentioned there. Uh, being organized, I think, helps you get through the day and also helps you prioritize tasks. So uh, like Marie had mentioned or, or Kanu had mentioned, like, don't lie. Uh, sometimes when you're put on the spot, you, you you can be stressed and it is natural to say you did something or you, you may have carried out something or called a consult. And that can happen because you just get nervous and you don't want to look like you missed something, but that that's fine. Uh, it, it happens to all of us. It happened to me. I wasn't able to, or I forgot to do something. You own up and then you remedy it by carrying it out. But uh, learning to prioritize or even having a sheet uh, where you write down all the tasks when you round with your team, that way you don't forget. And it's a learning process. We all make mistakes. It's a learning process and you'll become much more efficient from uh, whatever mistakes that you may have, have had during intern year. Uh, I just want to move on to another topic. A, a big issue that we always face is how to present a patient. So in many countries uh, that we're all coming from, we don't uh, present in this soap format or the, the history, uh, a brand new patient. Um, but I do know, Kanu, you, you used to join CPS early. I know Rafa rotated with me. And I asked Rafa, he was doing very well in presenting patients. And I uh, turned to Rafa. And Rafa, remember that conversation? What was your answer? Yeah, um, I felt like presenting patients in the US is pretty much what we do on the virtual morning report in CP Silvers, except for the planning assessments, but the subjective objective report is pretty much what we do. So I just had to adapt myself to the planning assessment because all the other two parts are already kind of mastered because of six silvers. So I highly recommend everyone who's here, um, who's, I don't know, um, want to learn more about how to present patients, maybe checking some BMRs or join us. It's all free, it's all on, on the YouTube channel. So I highly recommend it. It's, it was really helpful for me when I did my Subai at Sinai. Exactly. So thanks for sharing that. I, I was very impressed that CPS, this is the first time I saw CPS really help somebody get a, a, accustomed to acquainted with this system. So that framework was already there. When you follow the whiteboard, chief complaint, HPI, behavioral issues, medications, and so on. So it was very easy to then translate that over in real life. And then the emphasis on learning was assessment plan. So that's much less to contend with as an IMG starting internship. And you know what, you'll, you'll um, you know, hit it off from the beginning and impress your residents, interns and colleagues as well. So I think a lot of, a lot of you are investing a lot of time in CPS and join, joining VMRs, watching VMRs, watching the podcast. And I think it, it will reap uh, or it, you, you will get a lot of benefit and reap dividends uh, from the time that you invest. Any, um, Recommendations for the presentations, Maria. Anything else that you use to, to improve your presentations? Practice, <laughs> practice and repetition. You'll get better. Um, at the beginning, it was very tough for me. It was one of the things that I had the most trouble with. Um, and also, ask for feedback. Ask for feedback, and that'll help your your presentations too. Absolutely. You're right there. So I had an intern that had difficulty in presenting and I gave them the framework and they practice in front of a mirror. And I looked at them two weeks later and I was like, wow, 
that was a vast improvement and their confidence went straight up. So uh, absolutely great preparation, practicing, very helpful. Uh, Kanu, any recommendations or any experience with that? I was going to say the same. I think the um, practicing as much as you can and then um, the feedback process. Um, I remember on the first day I had um, a third year med student with me who was also starting with me on the team. And I was so impressed by his presentations that I used to ask him on how do you go about doing the presentations? And he helped me as well, um, apart from my residence. So I think as I said, learning from everybody uh, and learning kind of different tips and tricks, everybody has a different knack of presenting certain things or the order. So I realized that, um, for example, in IC, you kind of prioritize certain things more and in floors, you prioritize certain things more. Um, so I think that really helped. And again, the CP solvers, just tracking through the labs, going through how they present from the start to bottom, kind of helped me also because then I structured whatever note taking I had to do in that fashion. So to me, it never felt alien because I was used to that. So I think um, as Maria mentioned, um, that's, that's the key. Great, great. And um, Dr. Williams, uh, we're, we're getting towards the end of the hour, so we'll start winding it down. Any last uh, tips that you may have for our audience? Hmm. Well, you know, I think we've covered a lot of issues. I don't know if there's anything out there in way of a question that's important that has gone unanswered. I, I will share the fact that uh, in, in the United States, documentation trumps everything else. And personally, I think that's unfortunate. So your, your medical record, what you're documenting occupies a huge part of your time. And unfortunately, the evidence is very clear that in all that time you're spending in front of a computer, you're sacrificing time with your patient. I don't know what we can do about that. It's where we are now in the United States. And personally, I think the greatest satisfaction we have in medicine is the connection we make with our patients. So we've got to get more time at the bedside, more time listening to our patients and talking with our patients. Absolutely, it is very important, uh, especially when you have, kind of mentioned a student, uh, that's a prime opportunity for you to improve your teaching skills and that way it helps you get ready for PGY2 and uh, then you'll be able to tackle the task of, of helping interns and teaching interns. And like Dr. Williams mentioned, going to the bedside. So uh, take your students to the bedside and also instruct them. And don't be afraid to ask if, if they do great presentations, ask them for, for advice. They can help you as well. Uh, right now, you'll see many students that have been on the teams for a couple of weeks now, and they're sort of more experienced than the interns coming on so they can give you some tips and tricks as well. Maria, any final recommendations or words of wisdom that you would care to share with the, with the audience? Um, well, I'm excited for all of you. It, like entering here is really, really amazing. I guess, um, as Kanu was saying, sleep. <laughs> sleep is precious. Um, don't try to do that and also try to make time for yourself too. Um, it can get overwhelming. So I think that always trying to do something weekly for yourself, um, it's very important. And don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask your co-interns, your residents, your seniors, attendings. Don't be shy. I think that was one of the things that Kanu said that really resonate with me this year. And one of the things that really helped me. Awesome, awesome. And uh, Franco, anything from your perspective starting out, anything you've learned here, or anything that you found has helped with the stresses of starting internship? 
Uh, I think to rely on your co-interns that are facing the same issues as you. Um, take note of this VMR and watch it over again because it was pure beautiful, este, pure beautiful things that they have everyone said today. So I think rewatch this as many times as possible. <laughs> Absolutely. There are a couple of questions that were highlighted. Should we start uh, research and fellowship? So you do have plans. Uh, that will be, or you may have to prioritize later on in the latter half of your internship. You may have away electives, you may have an interest in research. At the beginning, I think Kanu answered it perfectly. In the beginning, learn the system. If you put all your thoughts on fellowship and so on, you will miss the part and the efficiency part, and it will affect you later on. You do not want to. Uh, have a poor performance carry on into the second half of the year because you will be pretty soon facing PGY2. So initially just prioritize the learning or uh, learning the ropes, being an effective intern, efficient intern, kind intern, uh, caring intern and sharing intern. And um, later on, the things will fall into place with each of your programs. You should be doing some sort of learning plan. So you have an away elective, you have certain time later on in the year where you could do some research and some people May, may emphasize that in second year. That's why applications for fellowships are now in third year. You have that second year to also use for, for building your CV for fellowship. Um, any closing thoughts? I'm, I'm just going to share a list I had of internships. Of internship, yeah. So um, a lot of this was highlighted uh, by our guests here, but... Um, First of all, I would say be curious. Mm -hmm. We talked about presenting the patient. So, um, and having an outline VMR, uh, there are some outlines available out there that I could share. I have to dig them up. Communication, Maria uh, Kanu mentioned, talked about. So communicating with colleagues, case management, there's many moving parts to um, taking care of a patient uh, in the hospital. So it's very important to become familiar with those with those members of the, the team. Physical exam, uh, had, as Dr. Williams highlighted, very important. If you need guidance in, in performing a physical exam, ask your attending, ask your residents, and also ask uh, permission from the patient that if you can examine them. So it's very important. I see that we just go and uh, examine the patient with us without asking for permission. And also guiding them, like, I'm going to be looking at your legs. I'm going to be exposing your abdomen. So definitely ask and respect the patient. Next is organize your workflow. So prioritizing tasks, consults, discharges, medications, calling family. So this is also very important. So having a task base uh, list can help uh, with the daily workflow. Uh, Dr. Williams mentioned about the knowledge. So there's mix app, there's board basics, there's... Um, uh, other, uh, there's reference books, there's up to date. So there's many different things, uh, whatever suits your style. CSOs was mentioned, whatever suits your style, definitely stick to that. The next is in training exam. There is an exam that's given, uh, during August, September, I think September around there. And it's a, a test that helps you prepare for the board exam. So uh, they usually tell you don't prepare, see what your basic foundation knowledge is. But I would say do some mix-up questions, get accustomed. It's a lengthy exam. And over the three years, you do it three times, and it should it should um, help you map out your weakest subjects where you should concentrate. And that way, at the end of the three years, you want to pass your board exam. Uh, always be professional. Just remember everybody's watching you. Students are watching you. Uh, nurses are watching you, attendings are watching you. So be very professional in your, your um, communication, being reliable, being honest, being trustworthy, being respectful to every member of the team from people uh, that are uh, that, that, that may be um, cleaning the um, maintenance people, um, cleaning the rooms, uh, people that are delivering the food. So always be respectful with everybody because you never know Tomorrow, they may come around and help you when you're in a sticky situation. Preparation, early, prepare for rounds, build efficiency. You will become efficient. You just have to put in the time initially. Seek out feedback. I love that. Many of you, Kanu, uh, Maria, mentioned feedback is very important. Ask for feedback. That way you can remedy any deficiencies. And the last um, tip I would say is escalate. 
if you come across a any issue where patient may be having hypoxemia, patient may be having difficulty escalate because if you fail to escalate, it could harm the patient and also it could bring judgment on your performance as well. So don't be afraid. You're not sure. Escalate up um, the chain. That way patient gets timely intervention. Uh, any, any input on these, Kanu or Maria, Franco, before we, or Dr. Williams, before we end the session? I think all of that is great, great, great advice. Um, it resonates with this ear. Um, I don't know what else to tell you guys. Good luck. Um, it's a very, very amazing experience. You'll learn tons. At the beginning, it might feel overwhelming, but everybody's going through the same. So also talk, talk with people, talk with your co-interns, um, share what you're feeling. And you'll feel that there's a lot of people that are there for you and that you will also be there for, for others. Yeah, I think I agree with Maria 100%. Uh, talk to the co-interns, talk to the residents who have done this, uh, who know how to do this. Um, and, you know, just uh, keep believing in yourself and um, kind of um, always find a strength to do things. Um, and yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Franco? Uh, I think I have nothing more to, to add to that. <laughs> and Dr. Williams? No, uh, Ravi, thank you <clears throat> for the opportunity to participate. And I wish all those listening a great success uh, and a wonderful, uh, productive future. Absolutely. I definitely want to echo what all of our guests. I uh, really appreciate the, the time that you've spent with us this morning, your valuable time in, uh, in helping CPS uh, IMG members and with this uh, next year. And uh, for those that are applying for Match 2023, we'll be having a number of sessions to, to help you through the application process. And I'm going to uh, end with a story uh, that did like Kanu and Maria had mentioned and, and Franco and Dr. Williams, don't be afraid to ask for help. One of the most proudest things I think I have done as an attending for an intern was not a medical thing. One of my interns drove her car to the hospital, didn't want to be wait, late for rounds. There was a very powerful storm coming through Baltimore and she drove over a down tree and a piece of a tree got stuck under a car. She didn't know about it and she kept driving. I'll deal with it when I get to the hospital. She came to the hospital and we start rounds. Uh, there's a tree stuck under my car. I'm like, hmm, let's go on a field trip to the garage and take care of this. So we go to the garage and we're like, hmm, the tree, it was probably like 10 foot long piece of tree there. So we uh, stood on the, the trunk, uh, the, the tree piece, and she backed out and she was free. And so she was not worried about taking out a piece of the undercarriage from a car. So there's many things that we can do. And I still remember that fondly. And her husband always texts me and is like, thank you for doing that. I'm like, you know what? That was one of the highlights of, uh, the I, I say, the number of years I've been at uh, our institution. So don't be afraid to ask. We can help you in many ways. We're all humans at the end of the day. And uh, definitely we are, we're a big family. So I'll uh, leave it at that. Um, thank you, everybody, for coming on. And have a, a great rest of the Sunday. And good luck in your intern year.